One of the most common questions we get asked is what is the difference between a wash and a contrast paint? And this can be something that people get quite confused about because at first glance, the two kinds of paint look really similar. And this did come to light with us recently when a friend of mine asked me about a contrast paint he was using, first time he was using them and he didn't understand why he was using that rather than a wash. Well, this is something that we thought would be great to go into in this video because we can talk about these kind of paints because they are different and they are designed for different purposes. And it's important to understand these because that way you can get the best results out of them. So we'll take a look at the two and get some pros and cons about things and how you might want to use them and also give you some of my thought process as to why I might pick one over the other. Now this is great foundational knowledge because from here you'll be able to understand what these paints can do and this way you can pick the one that suits the kind of techniques that you prefer for the particular task that you're doing and this way hopefully you'll have a better experience painting your miniatures. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the intended purposes of both kinds of paint. And we'll start out with washers, and by wash I mean all the different sort of brands you can get, including shades from Citadel. This kind of paint is designed to be painted over the top of other colours, and it's mostly going to settle and collect in recess details, giving shading and definition on your miniatures. Now these colours you paint over the top of can be anything, they can be light or dark, any sort of colour you want, and you can put any sort of colour and wash over the top of those. Once it's dry, what you'll then find is that a little bit of staining happens on the raised areas. The colour mostly goes dark in the recesses, but there's always going to be a a little bit of staining when you're using paints in this sort of way. And so what you do after that is move on to your remaining stages of your miniature, layering, highlighting, that sort of thing. Now a contrast paint by comparison is designed to do two of these steps at the same time, and that is the base coating and also the wash over the top of it. So when you paint it over, what you'll find is it mostly collects in the recessed detail just like a wash does, but the staining on those flatter areas is much, much stronger because it's kind of base coating that at the same time. Now you can really start to see the difference between these two paints then with this in mind if you start looking at them on the palette first of all. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'll start out with one of ours. This is our dark brown wash, which is called Battle Mud Wash. And with this, what we want to do is just get some onto the palette and you'll see when I first put it down, it looks very strong. But when you start manipulating it, you'll find as you draw it out and make it thinner, it starts to become quite a bit lighter. So if I start pulling it like this, you'll see as it gets thinner and you start seeing some of the palette through it, you can see how it becomes much, much lighter. So that's what's going to happen on your miniatures, on those flatter raised surfaces where the paint's thinner, where it tends to run away from it. That's the sort of staining you're going to get, whereas in the recesses, it becomes much darker and you get that shading. Now by comparison, if we take a look at a contrast paint, and I've got the dark brown one here, this one's Wildwood. If I get some of this onto the palette as well, you'll you'll see immediately it's a much more intense colour. It's much stronger and much darker. And if I start to draw it out, you'll see it stays darker as well. And whilst it still gets a little bit lighter when it's thinner, it's still a much more intense, much darker colour. So when you paint that onto your miniatures, then this is exactly what you're going to see. And I've got two miniatures that I've already been painted with this to show you. So we have two skeletons here from Games Workshop. The one on the left had Battle Mud Wash painted over the top of it, and the one on the right has had Wildwood painted over. And you can see it's like night and day. The contrast paint, whilst it's still settled in the recesses and given the shading just like the wash has done, it's much, much stronger on those flat areas, really darkening things down. So with that in mind then, what we're now going to do is take a look at, uh, well, one of these up close, and that's going to be the washers first of all, and we'll go into some of the features about it and how you can use it to get the best results on your models. One of the most common uses of wash is to apply it over a miniature that you've applied your base coats on to get that shading and definition. And we're going to be taking a look at that now in detail, showing how to do it. But also what we'll do afterwards is show how you can use a contrast paint in a similar way and how it's different in applying it and what sort of results it can give. But we're going to be starting out with the wash. And for this, what I'm going to be using is some Oblivion Black Wash, which is one of our ones from the Tooth & Coats paints. And what I'm going to do is paint it all over the Necron that I prepared for this purpose. So what you need to do with this kind of paint, because in a dropper bottle, is get some on your palette. If you're using one that's got a kind of flip top opening lid like a Citadel one, definitely recommend you use a palette as well because it helps you control exactly how much you're putting on there. It's very easy to go and put too much on because with wash, there's kind of a sweet spot as to exactly how much you want to have on there. Not so much that it's going to clog up detail, but not so little that it doesn't give any shading at all. So it comes with time and practice getting it right, but actually with wash, it's very forgiving. So it's a great thing to learn this for. So what you need to do is get a good large brush to apply it. I have here a monster brush from the Army Painter. Now, if you're doing a smaller area or a particular thing like just a gun for example, just pick a brush that's appropriate to what you're doing. But in this case, because I'm painting over the whole model, a large brush like this is fine. And all you do is load it with plenty of it and just start painting it onto the model. It doesn't really matter largely whereabouts you start. So for example, I'll start on the gun. All you do is just paint it on like this and just let it settle as it will, mostly in those recesses. You can see again, it is staining the upper surfaces just a little bit, but mostly it's in those nooks and crannies giving you that shading. 
Now when you're applying wash like this you'll find it does take quite a bit of time to dry and that's a good thing in this case because it gives you time to adjust things because when you're applying this quantity of this kind of paint onto it because it's quite liquidy what you'll find is it tends to run and collect on things. So what I'm looking for in a model like this is parts that are sticking out and usually parts that are hanging down too and the gun is a great example of this because you can see as time goes on more of the wash is running down and collecting in this sort of area here and it's starting to collect around here and here as well. Now if you let it dry like that it looks a bit unpleasant but because it takes quite a while to dry it's very easy just to poke your brush in there and redistribute the paint elsewhere or just remove it on some tissue if you've got too much and just poke it around elsewhere like this so you get that smoother result that's a bit more even across the miniature. Now once you are happy with how it's applied you just got to let it dry. This kind of quantity is going to take around about 45 minutes but again just keep an eye on it as it's drying just to make sure it's settling correctly as to how you want it to be. The wash is now completely dry and here you can see the difference it's made to the miniature in that it has generally darkened it down a little bit but mostly it's settled in those nooks and crannies and those corners and recesses giving that depth and definition. So shading it nicely so the details are nice and clear. You can see it's worked on all the colours too and even on the red just on top there and even these smoother curves that we've got on the inside of the shoulders is still settled within that curve giving that shading on that area. And from this point on what you then do is just carry on to finish your miniature so you could leave the sill there if you wanted to, you could highlight it, you could layer it to make it brighter. On the red what I do there is a little bit of layering to make it nice and bright again and then highlight it. The choice would really be yours. But the question is now, can you do that same thing with contrast paint? And yes you can, but it is going to do different things here and it does need to be applied in different ways because contrast paint is different and you'll find that as you're applying it, it behaves differently and as we've seen it is going to stain those flat surfaces more, meaning you're generally going to get a duller, darker finish to things. And this might be what you want, it might not, the choice really is yours and it depends on the colour scheme you're going for. But there are some important things to bear in mind as you're applying the contrast paint. The first thing is that contrast paint is sort of thicker than a wash, it's a bit more syrupy. As it's drying what it does is tends to form a skin on the top surface and if you go back to this too soon and try and adjust it what you'll do is tear that skin and get a very unpleasant finish to things and I've got an example of that just here, the skeleton we showed you earlier, if you take a look at the back of him, I did that on purpose on these parts just on the back here on the sword and on the back of his body there and you can see that weird kind of effect it's had, it's because the paint was drying but in going back to it some more of that colour I ripped it and that's what's given that sort of fuzzy finish to it. Now this is something that you can't go over again with contrast paints, to fix something like that you'd have to paint over it completely with something else and layer it or you know whatever it is you want to do. But in worst case scenario if that is quite thick and you tear it what you'll get is a texture on there and then there's nothing really you can do about it so that's something to bear in mind. The second thing is that contrast paint dries faster than a wash as well which means you have to be especially careful for that tearing effect and it means that you don't really have that free time to adjust things as it's all settling. So effectively to get best results out of it you kind of have to get it right first time as you're applying it. And we'll do that now in practice to show you exactly what I mean and for this what we've got is some Black Templar and another Necron painted up in the same way with the same base coats. What we're going to do is paint Black Templar all over him again. So what we need to do with this paint is again go for a larger brush for this kind of thing. I'm back to using that monster brush again. And with this paint definitely use a palette because you do need to control how much you're putting on at once. It's more important than with a wash when you're using this kind of paint. And you can see just how strong this colour is. What we want to do is load up with a fair amount of it. Not so much that it's dripping off the brush or anything but you can see I've got a good amount in there. And all you do is paint it over the miniature again but rather than just starting somewhere and working your way around pick a starting point that's one of the extremities in the model. And I'll typically pick a leg for this but you could start with an arm if you wanted to. It depends on the pose of the model. But what you do is just start painting it over and making sure you kind of colour in this whole area by manipulating it around this point as quickly and as efficiently as you can before it started drying to a point where you'll tear it. So kind of like to that point just there and once you've got it over that you leave that and don't come back to it. Just let it dry as it will but otherwise just carry on working it around the miniature. Now you can see the real big thing is here I'm not just slapping this on or putting it on really thickly like I did with the wash and so it's a much more controlled measured application just carefully colouring it in making sure it's fairly even and just letting it settle as it will. Now this will be quicker at drying than the wash will, so it's going to take around about 25 minutes before you could do anything else to the miniature. The contrast paint's now completely dry and you can see it's quite a large difference now, it's really darkened things down a lot and whilst you do have quite a lot of the black really settling in recesses giving definition, it has also got a lot of it staining the flat areas too, such as the forearm just here, see how dark that metal's become and it's quite a nice dark metal now but if you look at the red on the shoulders it's gone so dark that they may as well be black so at this stage for those I'd be rebase coating those and washing them over the top instead. Now if we compare it to the other miniature you can see again just what an extreme difference we've got here, even though we use black for both of them it's very very different, this one is much darker.
So even though the black's quite a strong example here, yeah, the same is true no matter what contrast paint color you're going for because it is still gonna settle on those flat areas and stain it with a different color. You can play around with this going for some bright colors if you want to, but it is gonna make that difference. So it is important to understand that's the different appearance you're gonna get on the final result. Now, another key thing here is the difference in how you apply the two. Even though the paints look the same in the pot and they sort of feel the same at first, as you've seen, they actually are quite different and they behave differently. So remember when applying that contrast paint, it requires much more care and time, but also you need to be efficient in how you're putting it on to get a good result. We're now gonna take a look at another form of shading miniatures, which I find contrast paint is actually very well suited for. And this is called recess shading, also known as fine lining. And essentially this requires painting the wash or the contrast paint, whichever you prefer, directly into recess details and is best applied onto miniatures where you have large flat surfaces without much detail on them, except for recess panels and details and things where you want to have the wash directly put into those parts. So we're looking at things like Space Marine power armor here and tow armor, tanks, things like that. And the reason why you'd go for this is because it's quicker to carefully apply this color into those recesses than it would be to wash it all over, then go back to layering just because there's so much layering to do here. Now you can use wash or contrast paint for this, but I'm gonna show you why I prefer to use contrast paint for this kind of thing. And to do so, I'm gonna start out with some wash. And I've got ours here again, Battle Mud Wash. And what we need to do is again, get some of this onto the palette. And for this kind of technique, you definitely need to use a palette for this sort of thing. And what we're gonna do is apply it using a fine brush. I have a small airbrush from Citadel. Now, there's a thing about the washers, which as you've seen by now, because they're kind of inky, what they'll do is tend to soak up into your brush very quickly. And this means that if you load up some of this, if we look carefully at the bristles, you'll see it balloons them out like that. So all the bristles are frayed out. I've not got a fine point on there. Now, if I tried doing this technique on a miniature like this, so this space range just here, and I was looking for all these panels and things, if I start applying this like this, you can see it's just gonna go everywhere and it's gonna stain a lot, which means a lot of layering later on to neaten things back up. Now you can mitigate this by just getting rid of excess paint on your palette. So if you just load up some fresh and just remove some on tissue, then just kind of drag your brush along like that. You can see it removes a lot of that paint and does bring those bristles to a point, but they are still quite wide there. It's still quite blunt at the point of the brush just there. So even now, it's still gonna be a little bit tricky to apply it directly into recesses. It's not impossible. You can see I am getting some neatness there, but mistakes are going to happen. So one just happened just there. So neatening up is going to be required for this kind of thing. So a contrast paint by comparison, because the color is more focused and more intense, it means that you don't have to have quite so much of it on your brush to get a similar kind of effect with the color. So it means you can avoid having it ballooning too much. And because the paint's a bit more syrupy, it tends not to soak up and fray the bristles in quite the same way. Now for this kind of thing, and I'm using wildwood here, I do like to add a bit of water to it just to take the edge off the paint, just cause it's so strong. But again, if I just remove excess and just make sure I don't have loads on there, you'll see the bristles do come together as a finer point. So just here, you can see they're a little bit sharper now, which means that if I apply this directly into the recesses, not only is the color stronger, but I do have more accuracy as to where exactly it's going. So I can get those recesses neatly and quite quickly as well. So you can see it's very useful for this kind of thing and it's not impossible to use a wash for it, but this is why I prefer to use the contrast paint for it because it's easier just to get those darker lines a little bit quicker and a bit neater as well. And there we are, I finished applying the contrast paint into all the remaining recesses and you can see it gives that nice crisp shading and really doesn't take all that long to do. So for this kind of thing, as I mentioned, you can really use both types of paint for this sort of shading. But I find personally the contrast paint because of the properties and the way it behaves, it just allows you to get that finer tip on the brush easier, making it just a little bit more suited towards this kind of thing. We've now taken a look at a few ways of shading in miniatures using some wash and contrast paint. But remember, contrast paint wasn't originally designed to do this kind of thing. It was, as we mentioned earlier on, designed to apply a base coat and also some shading at the same time. So abbreviating things down to one step and making it a little bit faster to paint your miniatures. So the intent of it is that you paint it over a light undercoat color. So a white or an off-white, something like that. And you rely upon those staining properties in the flat areas to get the color that you want and the more intense color in the recesses to give you that shading. So we're gonna do some of that now in a minute so this is a model from A Song of Ice and Fire. It's one of the Free Folk Raiders. What I'm gonna do is paint some Gore Grunter fur onto it. So a nice warm brown kind of color. Now, when you apply the contrast paint in this sort of way, the same things apply as when we did that, wash, that, that kind of wash effect of it all over the top of the miniature, in that you do still need to apply it with a degree of speed, and also you need to pick that starting point and work your way around again, because it will still have that tendency to start to dry a bit quicker than a wash. And if you go back to it too soon, you'll tear it and you'll get that weird film effect to it. So we need to have, bear that in mind as you're applying it. 
Now I am using a medium layer brush for this because this kind of application is much more controlled and definitely use a palette to make sure your brush isn't overloaded with too much because what you need to do is pick a surface that you want to paint with this color and essentially block it in. So for example, some of these skins that this model's wearing, we're looking at this sort of area here. What you do is just very carefully and as neatly as possible, just start blocking it in like this, just making sure that you only get the color on the part that you want to be this color. Now, sometimes it means it's a little bit tricky, such as around here, just taking your time to get to that part. But you can see I've splashed a little bit onto his little, little bag just there. So what you'd have to do once it's dry is go back to the original undercoat color as a painted on version and use that to neaten it up because because the color is a little bit translucent, you can't just go over it with another contrast paint because you'll see this through it, especially quite a strong color like this. So that's definitely something to bear in mind as you're applying it. Now it's a bit thinner than when we put it all across that model earlier on, so it's gonna dry a little bit quicker, but you can see here by just working my way around, I can keep it relatively smooth and get quite a nice effect with it. So just carry on all the way around to the front just here. Again, just taking my time being neat about it and there we go. So that's the intended application of this kind of paint. Which brings us to the question of, can you do the same sort of thing with a wash? And you can, kind of. It still can be applied in the same sort of way with the same intention, but because it won't stick so much on the flat areas and will collect more in the recesses, what you'll get is a much more washed out appearance to things. Now this might again be something that you want to happen in the miniatures and it's what you're going for them. So again, we'll show an example of that, but it is something to bear in mind. The color I'm using for this one is Agrax Earth Shade, so one of the stronger colors of wash, and just apply it in the same sort of way as what you would do with the contrast paint. So still use the palette to control how much is there, just so you don't overdo it. Now, because of the way this paint works, if you're trying to get the same sort of effect, it can sort of drive you towards a tendency to put on too much and it run out of control. So you must make sure you resist that. What you want to do is just load up some, not loads, and then pick the surface you're going to paint. So in this case, I'll go for the hood and just apply it in the same sort of way. And you'll see as I paint it on, it's very, very different. The color is nowhere near as intense as what the contrast paint's got. It's much more washed out, as I mentioned. So if you wanted it to be darker, you'd have to apply it as multiple coats. But you can see the application of it is the same sort of thing. It just gives a different result. Both paints are now completely dry. I can very clearly see the difference here and that the wash is much more well washed out, whereas the contrast paint is really vibrant by comparison. Now, to be fair to the wash, it's not really designed for this sort of thing, but you can see just what an extreme difference you get here. So for this sort of painting, I definitely recommend that you use contrast paints for it. Just remember that careful application, make sure you just do one bit at a time, make sure it's dry before you do the next one, just to make sure they don't mix or anything like that. But there you go, those are the main differences between the two paints. And I hope this has cleared up any confusion you may have if you had any questions about this kind of thing. Remember, the key point to remember is that whilst the paints appear very similar, contrast paint stains flat areas much more than what a wash does, and it has to be applied in a much more careful, controlled fashion. But anyway, have fun applying these paints, and we'll see you again very soon.